Hey, welcome back to PlayStation Experience. We're here live on the show floor. Just a few more hours left in Sunday for PlayStation Experience, but we have some more demos coming up, including, well, including Tim here from Trendy. We're going to be talking about your new game. Tell me about that. Hey, so it's uh, Dungeon Defenders 2. Um, uh, it's the sequel to the original Dungeon Defenders, um, which a lot of people played on uh, PlayStation and PC and also on mobile. Um, so Dungeon Defenders 2 just came out on PS4 uh, September 29th. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of things that are the same. There's some stuff that we've really tried to focus on and improve. Um, we're hoping to make it, uh, you know, we've tried to really make it a lot more like collaborative experience. So this is a very, this is kind of a, a work in development, this game. Yeah, this, case yeah. is a, a work in progress. This is a game that uh, already plays great. I was actually playing it out on the PlayStation Experience show floor right now, but you guys are in active development. This is by no means complete. No, it's not at all. No, no. Um, and uh, we're in alpha, early access. Um, we've been doing that kind of thing. And one of the things that we really wanted to do was because of how... Uh, um, avid the community was and involved the community was in DD1, we really wanted to try and enroll them in the process when we were making DD2. And so staying in early access, releasing an alpha, allows us to really get a game out there, see what people say, get feedback, have people tell us what they're looking at, how, what they think about what we're doing, and then sort of build from there on top of that so that we're making something that everyone really likes. That's great. Now, personally, I'm a huge, huge fan of the tower defense genre. I really did like Dungeon F Defenders back on PS3. I'm a big fan of like Kingdom Rush on, on mobile. I'm a big fan of uh, Pixel Junk Monsters yeah. on PS3, PS4. Uh, but uh, Dungeon Defenders 2, for me, really elevates the genre into a totally different place. I mean, I've never played a, uh, a tower defense game that really controls as well as sort of a hack and slash action adventure. And, that, and that's what I noticed when I played the game. I was playing the sort of uh, the warrior character. I don't know if it has a real name. Yeah, the square. Yeah. OK. And uh, man, it was so satisfying swinging that sword around. I mean, just very, very punishing, very visceral combat that feels very satisfying. In addition to all of the, the great addictive sort of strategic elements that your tower defense kind of elements come in. Yeah, man, for sure. I mean, um, you know, one of the things that's really interesting about the Dungeon Defenders, uh, I guess it's kind of like its own genre, is that it's sort of like this weird in-between between like a tower defense game and like an action RPG and like a third-person shooter, right? And it's sort of got elements of all three of those that are blending in. And so if you really like any one of those things, you know, we've really tried to do justice to each one of those. And so there's a lot of different ways to get into the game and get interested. Um, with, uh, you know, one of the other things that we've really focused on with Dungeon Defenders 2 is style and uh, the feeling of weightiness in the animation yep. and the, um, you know, really tried to up the graphical presentation of it all. And, um, yeah, you know, and like, thanks, man. Yeah, it's been, it speaks, it speaks for itself. Really I mean, well. we're checking it out here. We're looking at it live. We have live gameplay going on. And uh, one thing, of course, that jumps out to me right away You've got split screen support. Not yeah. the most common thing these days. You know, I know online is, is popular. I'm sure you guys have full online support yeah, for the game that. as well. But it's nice to see another game. That's been a theme we've been seeing more recently is some developers are saying, hey, you know, we miss split screen. Let's get some split screen back in there. And nice to see that uh, Dungeon Defenders 2 has that as well because it's a great fit for the, for the gameplay. Yeah, well, so, I mean, the Dungeon Defenders experience is a collaborative one, right? And uh, that goes all the way down to playing couch co-op, playing with each other, working together, having fun. Um, you know, with next-gen consoles, they have like really good hardware in them. But you know, you use that hardware and you make better visuals, and then it becomes a lot harder to do it like four times on yeah. the same screen. Yep. Um, and so you know, we've gotten two-person split screen, um, and it's running pretty well. You can see on the screen right now. Um, and yeah, you know, we really didn't want to, like I was saying, you know, we wanted to focus on upgrading the visuals and making it a very like beautiful and visually engaging game. But we also didn't want to make that preclude us from having that sort of core Dungeon Defenders element of being able to sit down, play with someone in your family, play with a friend, play with a significant other. And so yeah, you know, we had to have split screens. So tell me a little bit about the two classes that we're seeing in action here right now. For sure, man. Um, so on the left, uh, you have the Apprentice. He's kind of like a spellcaster, spell towers, does a lot of magic damage. Um, he has a, a, the Magicade. The, it's a barricade. It's like a weak barricade. You can kind of, it, it'll, it, it doesn't hold up to much uh, um, attack. 
Um, but then he has a lot of really interesting um, ability towers. He has like a slow beam that like does like a freezing ray that slows down enemies in an AOE. Um, and depending on how you uh, spec out your hero as you're growing up, as it's leveling up, sorry, um, and uh, um, which skill spheres you're getting, those towers can start to change and do all sorts of different crazy stuff, like freeze enemies solid, or do extra damage, um, or give your other towers nearby, like it will make enemies vulnerable to their fire. Um, the other person you're seeing on the right is the Huntress, and uh, she's kind of the more DPS-focused character. Um, she's an archer. She can uh, you know, shoot stuff from across the map. She's really good at anti-air. Um, she uses traps, which are a little bit different. Um, rather than being a tower that you set up and you face towards an enemy and it has to hide behind a barricade in order to survive, traps you want to set on where enemies are going to step on them, right? And then the enemies will step on it and it'll like explode or like shoot them up in the air or something like that or like drop fire on them. And then she also has a poison dart tower. And one of the things that we really wanted to focus on in Dungeon Defenders 2 was making it a more cohesive experience. Um, and part of that is that we created a, uh, a combo system between all the heroes and their abilities, right? So like, the Huntress has a geyser trap, right? And that'll shoot enemies up in the air and with a big jet of water, and they'll land and they'll be all soaking wet, right? And <laughs> then the monk has an electrical field. Ah. And so you drop a geyser trap, and then you put an electrical field right behind it. They land, they're all soaking wet, they step in the electrical field, and they get electrocuted, right? And it does a whole bunch of extra damage and stuns them for a little bit. It's like the old uh, hair dryer in the bathtub. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually a good idea. We should put that in the game. <laughs> Magical hair dryer. Now, tell me a little bit. I think it's interesting that you guys do have this early access model. Model. It's something sure. that's certainly getting a lot more interest these days among developers. I mean, things are changing, you know? Yeah. I mean, with social media, with all the, you know, the increased interaction that you guys can have with your fans. Yeah. Uh, tell me what's guiding you to this sort of early access model and kind of designing the game in public, if you will. Um, like I was saying, a lot of it has to do with the Dungeon Defenders community. Uh, one of the things that made DD1 really great was that there was a very strong modding community there. And actually, um, we just recently started up a community development team and started, they've been putting out patches for Dungeon Defenders 1 all over again on PC. Um, and so that really inspired us to get people involved early on, get their feedback, hear what they had to say, hear what they wanted from the game. You know, and also it's, you know, we're not like a humongous developer and so it's like <laughs> kind of helpful when you have more eyes on the game and there's more people finding bugs for you. Um, for example, we had a, uh, um, a really weird bug where there were these boots that if you stood on a tower, it would give it extra damage. And it just so happened that if you stood on a boost, the monk's boost door with those boots, it would do like some crazy multiplier. And it was just causing everyone to just run through all of the late game gameplay and just destroy everything immediately. And we, I mean, like knowing to test all those kind of things and all the sort of really complex interactions that you can get in a game like this, you know, we don't always have the time to go through or really the, uh, um, the uh, sheer um, hmm, curious uh, nature in order to go through and try all that stuff out. But when you release it to the community, you know, they'll see that kind of stuff and they can help you out and point out where you have some problems. Tell me a little bit about some of the environments that we're seeing here, because uh, I played on one map that was very reminiscent of a famous level from the origin ri yeah. original game. Uh, and tell me a little bit about your goals for sort of the, the architecture and kind of the level design itself. Yeah, cool. So um, one of the things about the original game was that it all took place within one tower, right? And you were sort of fighting your way up and trying to uh, um, pull all the enemies uh, who had escaped. Um, and we really wanted to try and keep that sense of place that was in the game. And so in all of the Dungeon Defenders 2 maps, you're able to actually see at least one other map, right? If you look off in the distance, you can see it. I believe in this one, if you look down, you can see the, uh, the one that's below this. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, down that's there. That's cool. Um, and so uh, we really wanted people to stay that same kind of like rootedness and etheria and sort of get a feel for what the area was like and that, they're, that they weren't just you know, hopping around from place to place and they were disconnected and all that kind of stuff, but that it was really about defending the realm from this invading army. That's really cool. That's a great detail you don't see in almost any game. Yeah. Now tell me a little bit, uh, kind of back to this you know, sort of early access model. Is there a time when you think you guys are going to be quote unquote done with the game or is this just going to go on forever? Yeah, <laughs> right. Do games release anymore? Uh, <laughs> Wow, that's a good question. I, I didn't mean to put you <laughs> on the spot there, but I mean, I mean, the game looks damn good to me. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. I think uh, 
I think at some point you're, you're going to need to move on and try something different, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're going to release the game. Uh, free to play, yeah. So in free to play games, it's like, does it, is a game ever really done, right? Because it's game as a service model. And so you're always making new content, getting new stuff out to people. And so in that case, it kind of becomes a question of what it really does it mean to go into full release when yeah. you're on free to play? Yeah. Um, we'll go into full release at some point. We're hoping some point in 2016. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but you know, even when we're in full release, the game's not done. Yep. We're going to keep making stuff. We're going to keep listening to people. We're going to keep trying to give people what they want, man. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Dungeon Defenders 2. Early access now on PS4. Yep. Tim, thanks so much for joining us. PlayStation.